हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी लर्न अबाउट बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट एंड अप्रोचेस टू प्रॉबिलिटी मटीरियल रिक्वायर्ड थ्री कॉइन्स ऑफ द सेम डिनोमिनेशन टू आइडेंटिकल डाइस अ पेंसिल अ स्केच पेन मार्कर अ सिलेंड्रिकल जार एंड चार्ट पेपर्स एंड वेरियस चार्ट फर्स्ट वी लर्न अबाउट various terms and concepts in probability probability is a branch of mathematics which is very important and it is used to measure the uncertainties of an event you would have heard about terms such as random experiment outcome equally likely outcomes event and uh, trials let us learn about them by an activity first random experiment is one whose outcome is not certain a when a coin is tossed once it results in two possible outcomes either a head or a tail but you cannot predict the outcome exact outcome in advance outcome is the possible result of an experiment equally likely outcomes are those whose chances of occurrence is same sample space is collection of all possible outcomes of an experiment an event is one or more outcomes of the sample space of an experiment and finally trial when you toss a coin three times it has got three different trials now we learn about all possible outcomes in different experiments let us toss a coin once when a coin is tossed once there are two possible outcomes either a head will come or a tail will come so this you can obtain Uh, using a tree diagram either a head will come or a tail will come so in all there are two possible outcomes head or tail similarly when two coins are tossed simultaneously we have four possible outcomes these are either both heads or head on first and tail on the second or tail on first and head on the second or the final outcome is both tails and we can obtain this again using this tree diagram in the first outcome we will have either head or tail in the second time when you toss a coin or on the second coin you will have head tail head or tail so these outcomes will be both heads head tail tail head and tail tail so these are the four possible outcomes which constitutes the sample space and any one of them is an outcome these are four outcomes and in totality all of them constitutes the sample space now similarly if a coin is tossed three times or three coins are tossed together in the first trial you will have either head or tail in the second throw you will have again head tail or head or tail similarly in the third throw or the third coin you will have head or tail head or tail head or tail head or tail so if we want to write the various outcomes the first outcome will be head 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 the second outcome will be head head tail the third outcome will be head tail head the fourth outcome is head tail tail the next outcome will be tail head head and then tail head tail and tail tail head and finally tail 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 so again these eight constitutes the sample space and each one of them is an outcome next we consider the example of throwing a die now this is a die it is a well balanced die which has six faces and in each of these six faces there is a dot the first one is the number 1 next is 2 after this comes 3 next comes on the opposite side 4 then you have a number 5 and then finally you have a number 6 so all of them again can be obtained using this tree diagram the outcomes are 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so each of these outcomes if you write together 
it constitutes the sample space. Now, let us understand the meaning of event. The coming of number 6 is also an event. In fact, each of the outcomes is also an event. But suppose we want to know which outcomes constitute the event of getting an even number. So, the event of getting an even number consists of three outcomes 2, 4 and 6. So, this should be clear to you that every outcome is also an event, but every event may not necessarily be an outcome. Next we consider throwing of two dice. Now, two dice are thrown together. On the first die, you may have number 1 and on the second die, let us say we have 1. So, the first outcome is let us say 1 1. Next, outcome can be 1 on the first die and 2 on the second. This is the next outcome 1 2. The third outcome can be 1 and 3. Next will be 1 and 4. Next will be 1 and 5. And then finally, 1 and 6. So, the first column constitutes of these 6 outcomes in which the first die has 1 and the second die have the other different numbers on it. Similarly, if we fix 2 on the first die, the second die again will have all possible outcomes like 2 and 1, 2 and 2, 2 and 3, 2 and 4, 2 and 5 and 2 and 6. Continuing like this, you can have 3 on the first die, 1 on the second or 2 on the second and then 3 on the second, then 4 on the second, 5 on the second and then 6 on the second. So, these outcomes will be 3 1, 3 2, 3 3, 3 4, 3 5, 3 6. Now, in all there will be 36 possible outcomes and all of them are listed here. So, these 36 possible outcomes constitutes the sample space. And like if we have to take the sum of the two numbers on the dice are at least 11, then we will take these three possible outcomes which is an event. Next we take an example of the 52 playing cards. Now, in all the deck of 52 cards are here. We have four suits, first is the spade, then a club, diamond and finally heart. Each of these suits have 13 cards each. Spade you have ace, ace of spade then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, jack, queen and king. Next we have club cards. Again start from ace, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, jack, queen and king. In the same way in diamond also we have got these 13 cards and these are from ace, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, jack, queen and king. And finally in hearts also we have got 13 cards ace, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, jack, queen and king. So, spade and club are black in color. So, there are 26 black cards and diamond and heart are red in color which are again 26. Now, this jack, queen and king are known as face cards. Now, if there are 4 suits, there are 3 face cards in each suit. In spade, we have jack, queen and king. So, in all, there are 3 into 4, 12 face cards. Next, we will learn the two approaches to probability. First one is experimental or empirical probability. Experimental or empirical probability of an event E is number of trials in which event E occurs divided by total number of trials. It is based on actual experiment or past experience. Let us learn this by a simple activity. Let us throw a die once. Now, it shows an odd number. First outcome is odd. Suppose it is thrown again. It shows an even number. Next, if you toss it for the third time, again it shows an even number. So, probability of an odd number we have to find by this simple experiment. So, in all total number of trials are 3 and odd number has come just once. 
So probability of an odd number is 1 by 3. Now if we continue tossing it further, let us toss it once again, it shows an even number. Further, it shows an odd number. So now the total number of times we have tossed this die is 5 and the number of times an odd number has come is 2. So the probability, experimental probability of an odd number is 2 by 5. Now we can continue like this for some more trials. It shows an odd number, next it shows an odd number, again an odd number, an even number. So now we have performed this activity 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 times. So the total number of times we have performed this activity is 10 and odd number has come 4, 5, 6 times. So now the probability, experimental probability of getting an odd number is 6 by 10. So what we observe is that as the number of trials keeps on increasing, the experimental probability of an event comes closer and closer to theoretical or classical probability. Like maybe suppose we continue tossing it 100 times and let us say we get 48 times odd number. So the probability, experimental probability of an odd number will be 48 by 100 which is 0.48. Now let us learn about theoretical or classical probability. It is the probability of an event E is number of outcomes favorable to E divided by total number of possible outcomes in one single trial. So it is based on the assumption that all the outcomes are equally likely. Now in this particular case, when we throw a die, it results into 6 possible outcomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So in the denominator, we have 6 possible outcomes and getting an odd number is 1, 3 and 5. So the probability of event E getting an odd number is half. So initially the probability was roughly 0.3, next it increased to 0.4, then it became 0.6 and finally if this is the result it will be 0.48. So what we have learnt is as the number of trials keeps on increasing, the experimental probability comes closer and closer to the theoretical or classical probability. So you should be very clear with the difference in the experimental approach and the theoretical or classical probability. Now let us say we throw a die 4 times, 4 times we are throwing a die and we want to know how many times the number 6 comes and suppose the number 6 comes twice, then the experimental probability of the number 6 coming in a die is 2 by 4. But you will notice that the theoretical or classical probability of obtaining a 6 is 1 by 6. So basically what is happening, the theoretical probability will continue to increase as a number of trials, the experimental probability will come closer and closer to the classical probability 1 by 6. Now let us take some more examples based on theoretical or classical approach. It is all these experiments are under the assumption that all outcomes are equally likely. Now suppose two coins are tossed at random, what is the probability of two heads? Probability of two heads is just one outcome and total number of outcomes are four. So when two coins are tossed, probability of two heads comes out to be one by four. Next if a coin is tossed three times, in all there are eight possible outcomes and suppose we have to find the probability of at least one head. Now at least one head means all of them will come in at least one head because see some of them are having exactly one head, some of them are having two heads and this is having three heads. So the only case we do not have to take is all tails. So probability of at least one head is 7 by 8. Similarly if a pair of dice is thrown and we have to find the probability of the sum of the two numbers is 7, then in all you have 36 possible outcomes which will come in the denominator and the sum being 7 is an event in which we have 6 possible outcomes. 
So the probability of sum 7 will be 6 by 36 which is equal to 1 by 6. Now finally, let us take one last case of an experiment in which one card is drawn at random from a deck of 52 playing cards and suppose we have to find the probability of a red card. Now in all we know there are 52 playing cards, so in the denominator will come all possible outcomes which are 52 and if you have to find the probability of a red card, the probability of red card will be there are 26 red cards. So 26 by 52 which is equal to half and next if you have to find the card which is drawn at random being a spade. Now there are 13 spades starting from ace to king. So the probability of spade will be 13 by 52 which will come out to be 1 by 4. Now next case is suppose we have to find the probability of a face card. Now there are 12 face cards as we have seen all these are face cards. So the probability of face card will be the favorable outcomes which are 12 and in the denominator will come the total possible outcomes which are 52. And finally suppose we have to find the probability of the card being a king or a queen. So how many kings are there? There are 4 kings 1, 2, 3, 4 and there are 4 queens 1, 2, 3, 4. So probability of king or queen is 8 by 52. Now friends you have understood the difference between two approaches to probability. Thank you.